So now we're going to look at nitric oxide, and nitric oxide is a powerful gas within the human body. In 1992, for example, the journal Science, you know, they said it was molecule of the year, that it was the one molecule in the human body which unites all the major disciplines of medicine. And it has, you know, a, a tremendous effect, a positive effect um, in various systems and organs. And until the 1980s, nitric oxide was considered a toxic substance which was responsible for causing pollution. When the first article appeared discussing the importance of nitric oxide, the scientific community found it difficult to conceive that a gas which was so toxic outside of the human body could actually play such an important role within it. And in 1992, nitric oxide it was proclaimed molecule of the year by the journal Science and was described as a startlingly simple molecule which unites neuroscience, physiology and immunology and revises scientists' understanding of how cells communicate and defend themselves. So here's one very simple molecule that has such a positive effect throughout the body. And in terms of nitric oxide and breathing, Professor Jan Lundberg is from the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, which is a world-renowned institute. And in his paper, Nasal Nitric Oxide in Man, which was published in Torex in 1999, he talks about nitric oxide is released in the nasal airways in humans and during inspiration through the nose, this nitric oxide will follow the airstream to the lower airways and the lungs where it increases the amount of oxygen uptake in the blood. So in other words, when we breathe through our nose, it increases the oxygen uptake in the blood. Nose breathers have a higher oxygen uptake than mouth breathers. And this turns, you know, again we're looking back at how many athletes are breathing through their mouth during sleep, during rest, even during simple activities such as walking. And that in turn then is going to reduce oxygen uptake in the blood. And of course, oxygen is king because if we've got a high oxygen uptake, we can have an improved delivery of oxygen to the cells. Nose breathing imposes approximately 50% more resistance to the airstream than mouth breathing. And this results in a 10 to 20% more oxygen uptake. And this is according to Timmons and Lee. And since nitric oxide is continuously released into the nasal airways, the concentration will be dependent on the flow rate by which the sample is aspirated. Thus, nasal nitric oxide concentrations are higher at lower flow rates. So now we consider two things. The first is the importance of nose breathing, because when we breathe through our nose, we're able to harness the benefits of nasal nitric oxide, because after all, nitric oxide is released from the paranasal sinuses, which are basically air-filled pockets surrounding the nasal cavity. And nitric oxide is continuously then released into the nasal cavity. When we breathe lightly through the nose, we carry a higher concentration of nitric oxide into the lungs. Inside the lungs, nitric oxide helps to open up the airways. So this is, of course, going to be very relevant to people such as people with asthma or people with any respiratory complaints. The second aspect is that nitric oxide then passes into the blood where it also helps to work as a vasodilator, it helps open up blood vessels. It also plays a role in neurotransmission and how brain cells communicate with each other. The gas plays a role in the cardiovascular and the si signaling of the cardiovascular system. This gas, nitric oxide, also helps to prevent and reverse high cholesterol, along with the buildup of plaque in the arteries. So, you can imagine that our entire blood flow, our blood circulation, which consists of 100,000 miles throughout the human body, nitric oxide plays a role in how our blood circulation functions. And even though nitric oxide, yes, it is produced inside the blood vessels, but it's also produced and released into the nasal cavity. And this points again, the importance of nasal breathing in terms of mouth breathing for good health. And of course, good health, good fitness. So when we inhale from the diaphragm, it brings nitric oxide from the back of the nose and the sinuses into the lungs. And this short-lived gas dilates the air passages in your lungs and does the same to the blood vessels.